Can't Escape the Magic by Art Fox. Chapter 9. A few days later, the four of them were trekking through the thinly shaded desert trail on their way to Balbad. Trees sparsely shaded their path, but the blazing heat of the merciless sun bore down on the travelers. But nevertheless, each of them beaming with bright enthusiasm and exorbitant amounts of energy. Well, some of them. Go on without me, Noct. I can't go on. Tell my story, said a moan face down in the burning sand. Noct was tugging on his arm as Aladdin and Morgiana stared back at them. What story? You're seven, you idiot. I'm not leaving you, but I'm sure I saw them and not going to drag your butt to Balbad. Get up! The hysterical boy, despite his rants, began dragging Sinna with his good arm face first through the sand. Let's go, you wimp! But Noct, it's so hot, I'm melting. Look at me, I'm just a puddle of a person. Sinna mumbled through a mouthful of sand. It's not that bad, I've seen way worse before. You just have no heat tolerance, get up! Aladdin laughed awkwardly. I guess you can tell they're really close friends, huh, Mord- Mord raised a red brow, huh? Finally, she came over and hoisted Sinna onto her back. Hey, whoa, are you carrying me? He blushed as the girl began trudging forward. You're slowing us down. She stared determinedly ahead as she held the boy. Oh, sorry. Hey, put me down. I'll walk. I'm just being dramatic, I guess. Sorry, Miss Morgiana. Fine. She set Sinna back onto his feet. The embarrassed boy began to fidget with his headscarf, making sure all of his hair was hidden from the sun's vengeful rays to distract from his blushing cheeks. Nagt scolded him as they moved forward through a thicker oasis of trees and blessed shade. You are such a wimp. Shut up. You got up for Miss Morgiana, but not me. You're a big brat. Bully, it's so hot, I'm soldering. I'm the one with a broken arm, and you don't see me complaining. Nagt, stag it, stag it. Well, I... I... Um... I don't have a good comeback, but you suck. Aladdin sneakered at the two bickering boys, and even Morgiana cracked a small smile at their antics. I'm glad we brought them along. This is fun, huh, Morge? I want to thank you and Alibaba, Morgiana said suddenly. The two boys stopped at their bickering to listen. Thank us? Aladdin wondered. I'm grateful. You've given me a future of true freedom. I am forever in your debt. She lowered herself to the floor. Thank you, Aladdin. Well, we, well, we have to thank you too, Miss Morgiana. Not exclaimed, bowing at the waist to the girl. Because if it wasn't for you, me and Sinna would still be slaves. Or dead. Sinna nodded, also bowing. Yeah, you saved our lives, miss. Nax smiled as Morgiana blushed at their praise. <laughs> It's all right, Morch, because if I know my friend Alibaba, he feels the same way I do. So there's no need to thank us because Alibaba is just that kind of guy, you know? Morgiana smiled at Aladdin's grin. Oh boy, it's been way too long. I can't wait to see him again. Aladdin exclaimed. Yeah, and we'll be able to if we follow this road. All right then, let's go. Aladdin imagined Alibaba walking towards them, a vision of friendship and joyous reunions. Unfortunately, that mirage melted away to reveal a naked man with arms open coming towards them. Oh, hello. Real nice weather today, huh? The naked man grinned down at them, his golden earrings catching the sun. The four children stared at the strange image in front of them for a full minute. Then, ah! Look out, Morgie, get back! Aladdin flung his arms out. It's okay, just leave him to me. Morgiana got into a fighting stance. My eyes burn! Said a shriek to hysterically covering his face. <laughs> A leaf? Nart cried as he buried his head in Sinna's shoulder. Look out! He might be a monster! Understood. I'll take care of it. Hey! Hey! I'm not! Hit me out! Huh? After a while and a very quick explanation, the man was giving some of Aladdin's clothing. It was so comically small on the buff man that Sinna couldn't look straight at him without sniggering. Nart kept elbowing him to make him stop. I got totally cleaned out by some bandits on my way to Bullbad today. My name is Sin. Sin? His name is like your Sinna? Aladdin cheered. Yeah, they are. That's interesting, Sinna said distractedly as he snuck a long drag of Nox water before the dark haired boy snatched it back with a hissed glutton. <laughs> the blue haired boy turned back to the stranger. You got robbed, mister? I see. I guess as somebody who crossed the desert, I can get a little paranoid about danger sometimes. 
Aladdin admitted. Sin got an interested look on his face. So you've crossed the desert. He stroked his chin at the information. As Aladdin described his trip, the man began poking at the fire they had set. Sin has scooted far away from the merciless heat. We're in the middle of the burning desert, so what should we do? I know, let's set a fire. That'll cool us down. He grumbled quietly as Noct elbowed him to shut up. <laughs> the man, Sin, smiled. That euphoria from coming upon unknown lands and knowledge, the confidence that comes from finding new paths, the experience, the bond between friends you'd risk your life for. Adventures are great. They are every man's true dream. Aladdin grinned excitedly. Yeah, I get it. I know exactly what you mean. The man laughed at Dr. Morgiana. Not only that, but one of the perks of going on a journey is coming across a sweet young girl like you. Morgiana nodded quietly. And Senna mumbled, What a dirty old man. <laughs> Wait, what? Senna gaped at the boy. You spoke too loud, dummy. Knight elbowed him again. Senna huffed and crossed his arms to protect his vulnerable ribs from his friend and amusedly watched the man's face crumble. Uh, I'm not old. Sinna raised an eyebrow at him. You're only mad because I called you old, not because I called you dirty? I'm not old. I'm in the prime of my life. That's what old men say. Ow! You're a spoiled little boy, aren't you? Probably, but I'm not old like you. So I've got the time to learn better. You're probably already going see now, though. I am not. I remember every journey I've ever been on. So is that a lot of journeys? Yes! So you have to be old to have gone on so many. You little! Knocked buried his face in his hands at the ridiculous back and forth. Aladdin's eyes darted from boy to man at each comment. His eyes widened, and Mordiana caught a strange smell on the wind. Her voice cut in between their banter. The scent of the ocean. Sin stopped his argument to tilt his chin forward. You should be able to see Balbot in the ocean just beyond that hill. He smiled at the final least girl. Did you learn that on your many journeys over the years, dirty old man? You know what? Aladdin and Morgiana ignored the bickering and raced ahead, while Noct and Sinna helped Sin break camp and gathered the packs. Sin looked at the two. Don't you want to go ahead with your friends? Noct shook his head. I need to go slower than them. My ribs are pretty sore right now. I noticed your arm and the wrap on your leg, but your ribs are hurt too. And your little friend has a splint on his wrist. Just what happened to you two? The man asked, concerned. Our master threw us off a cliff, Senna bluntly cracked, slightly enjoying the look of shock on his face. Why is it so much fun to tease this man? He wondered to himself. Sin blanched and furrowed his brows in an upset manner. Your master? So you were slaves? Yeah, and he just threw me off the cliff. Senna was stupid and jumped. Not poked at his friend. What? You jumped off a cliff? Sin exclaimed, shocked. I wasn't thinking about it, I just reacted. Senna defended and whirled around on his friend. And if I hadn't jumped after you, you could have been hurt. He shot at him. I was hurt, you dummy. You jumped into a pit of many beasts. Think things through next time. Noct slammed his good hand against Senna's covered head. Senna crumpled and held his aching skull. Ow! You were a lot more violent since then, you know that, Noct? I'm trying to knock some sense into you. I would have done this before, but I didn't think you were that stupid. Knight returned and punctuated his explanation with another shot at Sinna's skull. Sinna returned with a tug on Knight's braid. Then to stop the fighting, Sin held the back of both boys' shirts and pulled them apart. Now, boys, let's not argue. You're friends, after all, right? They apologize to each other. The two boys stared at the man and looked back at each other, shamefaced. Sorry I called you stupid. Knocked, mumbled. Sorry, I was stupid. Sinna grumbled and looked back at Sin. Now put us down, old man, he commanded, pointing a finger at the ground. The man, Sin, grimaced and then gave a not so nice smile. You know what? No. No? What do you mean, no? Sinna growled as the man hoisted the packs on his back and held the boys in each arm. Knocked was held on his hip with his good arm looped around Sin's neck, while Sinna was held awkwardly by his gut under the other man's arm. Sin laughed at Sinna's wiggling attempts to get loose, while Nacht settled quietly. Both of you are hurt, so I'll carry you the rest of the way. I want you to carry me. Put me down, old man. Then consider this punishment for calling me out, little boy. Grrr! Sinna growled, while Nacht giggled happily from his perch. Thank you for carrying us, Mr. Sin. You're welcome, Nacht. 
Sin grinned at the cute boy in his arms and happily ignored the spiteful grumbling from his other hip. Then Sin carried them up the hill to join Morgiana and Aladdin. Both of them smiled at the sight of the three maid. Morgiana took her bedroll and Aladdin took his bag, and the five of them continued down the hill into the great island kingdom of Balbad. With Sin out grumbling the whole way down about both the heat and this weirdo that the group picked up. Sin carried the two boys all through the crowded streets of Balbad. Sinna kept up a constant commentary of scowls and creaking grumbles as he went. The blazing sun shone brightly down on the group as Sin educated the children on what he knew of Balbad. They wandered past some stalls of food and shining jewelry. An array of decorated pots was mounted on one stand while another had huge melons stuck over Sin's head. There, the people were finely dressed and bartered and traded easily with slips of paper. Then they crossed a stone bridge, and Sinna could tell it was a much poorer district. The streets were dirty, and there were people slumped in the corners, looking starved and pitiful. Small, malnourished children watched them with hungry eyes from the windows above, while the blazing sunlight was only punctuated by occasional shade from overhanging holy rags and grungy heat. Sinna looked up to see Sin taking in the decrepit scenery around them with a shrewd eye. He looks upset. Like this is all personal to him, Sinna thought. As they walked along a wooden plank way, Aladdin pointed out some smeared graffiti on the brick wall. Well, I don't really want to know what they used for paint, Sinna scowled as he took in the rusted red flakes coming off the message. Sin tightened his grip on the two boys he was lugging around when he heard that. Hey, wash the stranglehold, old man, Sinna is like a wet cat. Sorry about that, oh, Sin smiled carelessly. Sorry, Sinna's so cranky. He gets like that when he's hot, Nact whispered. I heard that. I'm not cranky, Sinna wailed. What does the wall say, Mr. Sin? Nact asked, ignoring his grumbling friend. It says, overthrow the monarchy. I'm guessing you can't read, Nact. No, sir. Neither can Sinna. I can read and write, too. You can write your name, Nact shot back at him. That counts. It was true that Sinna's mother didn't have the time nor the knowledge to teach her son how to read or write beyond his name, and Fatima never bothered to educate his slaves. So while Sinna did know how to read and write fluently in English, the odd Arabicized symbols that they used here wasn't something he had ever seen in his past life. It kind of looks like Hermione's homework for ancient runes, he thought absently, but it's not like I ever paid any attention to that either. He depressed himself further. <laughs> Why would someone write this message, mister? Aladdin wondered aloud. Well, ever since the death of the former king, the whole country has been in crisis, Sin informed them as he led them to an opulent area. He stood grandly in front of a magnificent building. But you're all perfectly safe here. It's the finest luxury hotel in the country. It's where I always stay. And I'll take care of the bill. You four can stay here as long as you desire. Wow! Thank you, mister! Aladdin's eyes glistened cheerfully, and Morgiana gave a shy bow of gratitude. That's very nice of you, Mr. Sin. Nagt smiled gratefully. So, you're a rich, dirty old man, Sin said aloud. I'm not old! Sin jostled the boy playfully, scolding him. But you admit to being dirty and rich. Never mind, let's go in. Sin laughed as he carried the two boys up the stairs, leading the way. Hey, stop right there! Who the heck are you, shady bastard? Guards swarmed the man and tried to repel him with wooden staffs. Nucked and Sinna were jostled in the fray. Hey! Hey! Watch it! Sinna hissed at the guards. Shady? What's so shady about me? Come on, it's obvious. What part of me are you referring to? Are you kidding? Look how you're dressed! And you're looking around two kids half naked to boot! Sin kept the staffs from hitting the boys, but he couldn't hold them off with his hands full. They were getting pushed back down the stairs. Enough! A commanding voice stopped the guards. It was a young man with freckled skin and long robes. He had wide, dove gray eyes that shrewdly ran over all of them. Behind him was a very tall man with bright red hair and brickled and armor. Sin explained the situation to the new man, and the freckled men addressed Aladdin and Morgiana, while Sin carefully set Nacht and Sinna on their feet. Unfortunately, it seems our master has caused you quite a bit of trouble. As he said before, you can leave your bill to us. Aladdin raised his arms excitedly. Wow, thanks, Mr. Subordinates! And you! The man turned to Sin. Let's get you into... Sinna crashed face first into the fine carpet of the hotel.